Hi, I'm Divya Gugnani. Set in beautifully scenic Knob Hill, the dining room in the Ritz-Carlton San Francisco is San Francisco's only mobile five-star dining. Here, an iron chef creates modern French cuisine with stunning Japanese influences. So let's go behind the burner and meet the chef. I'm here with executive chef Ron Siegel. I see tomatoes and basils and all those wonderful things that I enjoy in summer. We're going to do king salmon with tomato gelée, tomato, toy box tomatoes, little basil seeds, and some, we'll make some basil on too. So the first thing I would do to make this dish is I would start by making tomato water. And um, the beauty of tomato water is you're extracting all the flavor of the tomato, and, uh, but you're going to have it be clear like it would be if it was water. Um, and so what kind of tomatoes are these? These are just uh, yellow tomatoes. What I recommend people do is uh, use the juiciest ones possible. Uh, you want something that's got a lot of juice in it because the more juice you have, the more water you're going to extract from them. Add a pinch of salt because salt, as we all know, draws moisture out of anything. Absolutely. So As the tomato gets processed, it just releases more and more juice more, and water. Exactly. You can add like basil to it if you want it and you're going to get that flavor. I like to hang the water and the easiest way is to take a napkin, one that you don't care that much about because you're going to stain it a little bit and then I just tie the old slip knot and so it's in there so it holds it over a plastic container. So you can see the juice is kind of in there and you can really smell it. I mean, you can see it's starting to drip down, right? I recommend making this part the night before. I leave it out because if it's out, it stays warmer and it drops faster. Leave it out for a few hours, and then once it's strained, then put it in the fridge, and then the next day, go back and make your jelly. What we can do real quick, because this takes a few minutes, is we can bloom these basil seeds. So these are just lemon basil seeds. You can get them at any specialty supermarket. And there's two ways to do this. You can use extremely hot water, which will make them turn like that. Or you can just take regular cold tap water um, and just kind of run it, add a little bit of water to it, and just mix it up. They're plumping up they're, a little bit. They're plumping, and there are, they're starting to become a little more transparent. I want it to be spreadable, so we'll be able to move it around on the plate. What I've done is I've grabbed two sheets of uh, gelatin. And this is something people are afraid of. You're going to show us It's so easy. easy. So what you do is you lay the sheets down gently so they're separate and you kind of put them in the water and it'll take about five minutes or so at least to soften them. While that's happening, we're going to very gently warm up our tomato water, which is on the stove. So we grab some Toy Box tomatoes here. They're nice and little. Nice and little, just um, and something that you can just get at almost any uh, grocery store. So what's a good tip for buying tomatoes? Well, I mean, I always think you should buy a ripe a tomato that's at like a farmer's market where it's more ripened off the plant, right off the plant, and then just brought to the market, as opposed to going to a store where, generally speaking, it's they're buying so many cases that they generally are a little underripe, so they can last longer, not have to throw them away. So I'm going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, and I'm going to just pour it very gently on top, just a little bit, just to kind of let it pick up a little bit of that flavor. I'll put a pinch of salt in there. It's gonna draw out the moisture. It, it'll draw out a little bit of moisture. And so what I like to do is I like to squeeze it out with my hands to get the excess water out of it. And um, because that's gonna change the recipe. So I gently just place it right in there. Into and, your warm tomato yeah, water. Yeah, and you can see, if you, if you can, how it instantly almost completely dissolves. Right. So you wanna gently stir it. So the technique is a slow Very twist. slow. Don't you, incorporate too much air. You want to just pour it onto a lid. And what we'll do is we'll put it in our refrigerator. We've already picked about two bunches of basil. So I'm adding a little bit of salt. And what I'm doing is that's going to help flavor the basil. Salt brings out flavor. And we're just going to add the basil. And, and it's uh, mostly the leaves, not necessarily the stems. Yeah, you don't want the stems just because it's going to be harder to uh, puree. Plus, the leaf is where you're getting all this great color from. You can see the water came instantly back to a boil, and that's really what you want. You don't want it to simmer because then you're kind of defeating the whole purpose. I'm just scooping that out, and then I just put it in a strainer. And the reason why I keep it in a strainer is because it's easier to get the basil out. Then I don't have to fight with the ice later. So you never want to leave anything in ice water too long because if you do, the flavor of that vegetable or herb or whatever is going to go. It's too watered down. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wring this out a little bit. And so I put it in a napkin, and the reason why I like to wring it out is because I don't want any water in it. We're going to add this to the blender. You want to add enough oil to make the blender spin, and other than that, 
the, le the, the less oil you add, the greener you'll, your final product will be. So basically just kind of soften that up and we're just gonna go ahead and pour this right into there. Just when you thought you didn't have anything to do with your newspaper rubber bands, you found something. Right. So we're seasoning our fish. We're, we've lightly seasoned it with salt. Now we're gonna put pepper. Is we're that just, white pepper? That's white pepper. We're gonna put a little bit on both sides. So how do you pick your salmon? You want it to be firm and free of blemishes and, and just a nice piece. I prefer to use clarified butter when I'm cooking fish because I think the flavor's real good with fish. So basically, I'm just gonna push it off to a lower heat. You always wanna flip away from yourself, right? Not towards yourself because you splatter hot oil. So that's the technique, flip away from yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this out now and we're gonna let it rest. So we're ready to plate. We're gonna take a little bit of basil here. And we're just gonna chop it up, just to put this down on the plate to hold the gel, to hold the tomato um, in place. I just cut it down like that, and then I take an offset palette knife, it's really small, and I just kind of slide, slide it right underneath there. That looks very pretty. Yes. It's a great way to start. I if it was me, I would just cut a square because a yeah. square is a lot easier to cut than a circle. Go back to our, our, our uh, basil seeds, which have fully bloomed at this point. You're just gonna kind of lay this down on the plate and it adds a nice little texture to the dish. We'll put the basil oil down real quick. I'm just gonna kind of cover the jelly up. It's a harmony of both flavors and colors. Yeah. So now we sit down and get a chance to enjoy this. And uh, it's basically that it's the king salmon dish with the tomato gelée and the different toy box tomatoes, the basil oil, the basil seeds. So you have lots of different textures. Texture, I think, is the key component yeah. of this dish. It's, it's just the mix of the flaky fish, the beautiful tomatoes, which yeah. have been sitting a little bit in the oil, so they're now a little softer the jelly, the oil, and the seeds. I mean, it's a harmony of really amazing summer textures. Cheers, Cheers. thanks for having us. You're Stay tuned to Behind the Burner, where we give you the tips, tricks, and techniques that are lighting the culinary world on fire. For the recipe, Q&A, photos, and more, visit BehindTheBurner.com.